guys um so today i've interviewed uh jackson tisdale and we actually had a really great conversation about him why he started podiatry what made him join podiatry his tips um we spoke more about the influence of social media in podiatry and how it can help everyone and we also covered foot functioning paradigms what they are and how important they will be for year two students uh, which is what I'm going to be going into next year so I'll be doing my year two podiatry and um, I actually had a really great time interviewing him there is a bit of a plot twist so you'll have to watch the full video to find out exactly what that is but I think you'll enjoy it as much as I did for sure. Thank you so much. And I hope you enjoyed the video. Bye. And I think it's ready. Okay, brilliant. Hi, Jackson. Thank you so much for joining me here today. How are you? Yeah, really good. Thanks for having me. It's um, yeah, awesome to talk to you. I lo I'm loving your, um, your videos on Facebook and Instagram and <laughs> all the rest of it. They're, they're really good. Oh, thank you. I have, so, I have honestly I have so much fun recording them. I'm just by myself in my room, so I'm sure like all my neighbors will think I'm crazy at this point. But it's a lot of fun for me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Don't worry about them. <laughs> so I wanted to ask you, how did you find out about podiatry? Okay, uh, good question. I um, pretty common story amongst a lot of podiatrists is I, I saw a podiatrist when I was when I was young. Um, so I had I had. Um, uh, leg problems when I was playing sport and that sort of thing. So went and saw okay. a podiatrist, um, and he was really good and got me got me better, got me back to doing what I want to do. So um, yeah, I sort of that sort of planted the seed for me. And um, I, I never he told he actually told me um, to study. I should study podiatry. This was around I was sort of like fifteen or sixteen, like like towards okay. the end of high school, um, sort of thinking about what I wanted to do at university and that sort of thing. And um, he asked me, what do I want to do? And I, I said, I didn't know. And he's like, well, you should do podiatry. And I was just like, ooh, no, like, I don't want to touch, <laughs> people. Want to touch people's feet, right? Um, <laughs> the <a> common <laughs> reaction. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Um, just didn't, um, didn't really know what I wanted to do. And I was just like, no, that's, that's dumb. But then I started studying um, biomedical science and I really didn't like it. Um, so I wasn't going well. So I was wondering why I wasn't going well. And I realized it's cause I just didn't enjoy it. So, yeah. um, and then it just clicked in me on me one night. It was literally like a light bulb moment. I was in, I was in <laughs> lying in bed. It was literally a light bulb moment. I was lying in bed and all of a sudden it was just like, Oh, podiatry. And then I just like, literally the next day I changed my, my course to podiatry. Um, and wow. yeah, really, really enjoy it. So that must've been like, I mean, that must've been jarring for you. Like, was it an easy easy to switch over was it did you have any doubts when you were switching over um no nah, not at all not at all I, I knew I wasn't enjoying what I was doing um at, yeah. at university at the time and um I didn't want to be a lab brat I didn't want to um be oh. just I didn't, I didn't want to just be researching and, and and studying and um you know playing with test tubes yeah. for the rest of my life so um so yeah I, I got um yeah the light bulb went off to go to podiatry um, thanks to the seed that, that Kurt planted for me. Yeah. Um, and, um, yeah. And, and, you know, at the time, I was, yeah, it was so good. I was, I, and I was still, um, struggling with injuries and stuff. Like I was still playing football. So, you know, okay. that kept me interested in that sort of things, you know, physio or something like that. So, um, yeah, just podiatry one day and, and stuck with it since and absolutely love it. Oh, brilliant. Well, you know, you're doing so, so well. Like I really enjoy, I, I enjoy everything you post on LinkedIn. LinkedIn, your Facebook page. So what, what made you start your kind of social media presence with podiatry? Like, was it like an easy, quick decision? You're like, yep, I graduated. I'm going to make a Facebook page. I'm going to do this, this, and this. Or did you have to kind of like mull it over? Um, I, just, I just started one day. Um, it, it, I, I actually had a couple of students in the clinic with me. So, um, so I was my first year out of uni and I was... Um, had a couple of students come in and I was like supervising them and, and they were learning off me. And I, I really enjoyed that. I really enjoyed yeah. teaching. Um, so I just sort of, um, and then at the same time I was listening to, um, to people on social media, like consuming a lot of information myself and a couple of guys who I was following um, were, were talking about putting yourself out there and um, producing content and yeah. those sorts of phrases and words and stuff. And, um, yeah, documenting and producing content and, and all that sort of stuff. So um, I sort of just gave it a go and I got a little bit of traction early, which was good. So um, I just started posting some stuff. So some 
um, opinions or experiences or thoughts I had. Um, yeah. And yeah, it got, it got a lot of engagement, which is, which was really cool. So um, it got a lot of, you know, likes and, and comments and um, <laughs> on, on various platforms in particular um, LinkedIn. So um, that sort of steamrolled from there. I just sort of, it just sort of kept building and yeah. uh, I just kept doing it and yeah, I, I enjoy it. It's um, I think it adds to, it just gives me, um, someone described the other day, it was like a, um, it's sort of like an outlet for me. Like I, ne I never, I never thought of it like that before, but yeah. it actually, um, when you, when you, yeah, once, as soon as I said, I was like, oh yeah, I guess it kind of is like a creative sort of outlet. Cause I've never, I've never, yeah. um, I've never thought of myself as creative, right? I've always been very logical and very, um, very mathematical and science based. Yeah. And, um, yeah, not really, you know, I was never into art or, or I like music, but I've never really played music um, and that sort of stuff. So I guess, I guess yeah. like producing content online and, 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 and videos and, and um, yeah, all that sort of marketing type stuff or, or personal brand building, that's all um, creative, right? That's all, um, so I, I, yes, once, once I started to realize that as well, I started to, I've started to enjoy it more. Like it's like, oh yeah, I'm sort of unlocking another side of um, my sort of professional and personal development. It's really cool. Yeah. That's amazing. So for everybody that's going to be watching this um, interview, what, do you, could you want to quickly explain what you are doing on social media? So your performance pod, your new grad tips, you want to talk a little bit about that? Yeah, sure. So um, my personal uh, LinkedIn page is where I share most of my stuff. I also have Instagram um, and my um, Facebook group, the performance pod. So the performance pod is a group that I started um, for the podiatry students that I had come into my clinic um, okay. personally. So it started off really small. Like there was only literally like three of us in there to start off with. Um, yeah. and, I, and I started adding a couple of friends and then other like new grads and students that I was sort of meeting and, and networking with along the yeah. way. I just added them into this group. So I think we've got about 40 people in there now. Um, so, wow. and that's, that's sort of, that's just where I share, um, you know, my, my content, I share it in there as well, but then I also, um, just give some general advice and share some tips and, um, try and get some, um, you know, discussion happening around a few things. So, um, it's sort of like a, a mentoring group, I guess, without being sort of one-on-one -on -one mentoring, it's more yeah. just, you know, sharing some ideas, but I do hope to expand on that and, um, and, and really, um, really get more active in it, um, pretty soon. So, yeah. Um, so yeah, that's, that's the Facebook group, which, which any of your friends like, um, podiatry students or, or new graduates, they're, they're welcome to join. Um, I'll just, yeah. I'll set it up and add them in and, um, yeah. And then yeah, I've got my, yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, and my, um, personal page where I'm sharing, I'm sharing some new grad tips. So, um, I started doing that a while ago, some new grad tips, and then, um, they got really good engagement. I only did about, um, you know, 10 of them at the, at first. Um, yeah. but then, um, and then I dropped off a little bit from those and now I'm doing, now I started them up again because someone actually asked me, oh, um, with your new grad tips, are you, are you ever going to, um, uh, are you ever going to write a book on new grad tips? And that would be so cool. <laughs> yeah. Well, I was like, oh, um, no, like, uh, I don't think, anyone, <laughs> any, I don't think anyone would read my book on, on new grad tips. Um, but I, what I, I that sort of sparked for it i think i would love to read stuff like that i mean i know people in my class would definitely appreciate that as well do it yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah definitely yeah it just it just seems a bit um a bit silly to be like oh i'm writing a book you know um but <laughs> um but the but it just got the it just sort of just sparked it back up again so i started doing some videos because i'm um trying to do more and more videos so i thought it would be good to do like a, a new new grad tip video um every every day or every second day like um as often as I can. And um, yeah, just some general advice and general tips um, on, on um, being a new grad or um, from, yeah. because I guess, I guess because I'm a recent new graduate. So I started doing these new grad oh. tips as a new grad. Um, so I just wanted to give sort of a different perspective to the whole profession, not just to fellow new grads yeah. and students, but to, to all podiatrists of like what we're sort of thinking or what I'm thinking, but um, possibly yeah. others as well. And, um, yeah, from, from a younger person's perspective, I think it's good to, um, and, and guys like you as well, doing your social media stuff, it's good to get some younger, um, influence in yeah. the profession. I think it's really important. So, yeah, I mean, like, I mean, I think I, I genuinely believe that the way that we're going to spread any kind of awareness with podiatry, cause there's still a lot of people that 
they don't know what it is or they're confused between like propodists and podiatrists and they really don't have a clear definition. But I think with the variety in social media, we can definitely help spread that awareness and, and potentially get more people interested and get more people joining. Um, yeah. I think I think we need more 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 people in the healthcare profession to begin with, not just for nursing, but for you know other aspects of healthcare. I think that would be really great. Um, I did want to pick your brain about you said something about networking. Now, as yeah. for students, it is kind of um, it can be a little bit tricky to manage networking and also kind of manage your like study time as well, but how would you rate the importance of networking for a student or would you kind of say like wait till you graduate and then start networking or well, what's your opinion where do you stand on that yeah networking's huge right it's the game changer so if you start if yeah. you start networking um you get you're gonna go you're gonna if the next the next person you meet right could be the could they could give you the opportunity that changes your whole career changes your whole life right so um, even if you don't network per se, but if you start to plant seeds in people's head, like, or if you start to get on people's radars. So, yeah. um, that's a, that's a really cool philosophy. I've, um, I heard somewhere of getting on people's radar. So you might yeah. not actually connect with them and, um, and start to have a meaningful conversation with them, but you might just, you know, send them a message. And even if they see it and don't reply, right, but you, you've got on their radar. So the more they, the more they, the more they see you pop up and the more you try and engage with them, the more relevant you're going to become to them. So, um, okay. so yeah, get it. So just putting yourself out there, whether it be by um, directly messaging people on platforms like LinkedIn, which has worked really well yeah. for me. That's been, that's yeah. been my best way of, of networking. Um, yeah. I actually, when I, when I started to do my LinkedIn posts, um, on just random topics, new grad tips, whatever I was learning, whatever, um, whoever engaged with that post. So whoever liked it, whoever commented on it, I would go on their profile and, and send them a direct message and thank them mm -hmm. for engaging in my content and, and yeah. start a conversation with them, read something on their profile that is interesting, try and find something, even if it's like just something small, just be like, Hey, how did you find that yeah. course that you did? Or, or something like just, or, um, you know, how, how are you enjoying your um, first couple of years as a podiatrist? Like just, just send them a message and engage with them. And that's how you create mm -hmm. those, those genuine connections. Um, yeah. yeah. Rather than just being a, a consumer, actually use social media to your advantage, like actually be involved in it. Um, yeah. and, and I've had, I've had a number of opportunities um, come directly from LinkedIn. So people have messaged me on LinkedIn and um, asked me to, to, to get involved in certain projects or, um, or I've had, um, so the job that I'm at now, the, 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 well, both jobs that I've got now, they had both, um, sort of heard of me before from my LinkedIn profile. So, um, oh, wow. it helped, it helped me with getting employment. So, um, yeah. yeah, it's really, it's really good to network on social media, but also like if you can go to events, um, when events are happening again, um, go mm -hmm. to courses and that sort of thing really good yeah. as, a, as a student you can put yourself out there as well um so don't be scared just because you're not a podiatrist i definitely get out yeah. early and put yourself yeah, out yeah. there send emails send send emails to clinics asking if you can do like um work experience and that sort of thing yeah uh, send um direct messages are, though, are really good because then you like if on linkedin right if you can find someone on linkedin you send a message it goes directly to them right so yeah wherever you email, whereas if you email a clinic then they um, you have to go through like the practice manager. You have to go through all these like barriers oh. to, to get to the person. So direct yeah. messages and LinkedIn is the best platform for that. Sending direct messages to people. Yeah. Um, and that's, that's what I'd recommend hundred percent. Yeah, no, that's fantastic. I, I like, I, I agree with what you're saying about emails because emails can kind of get, a, they can get lost in translation. Whereas um, like a DM it's, it's instant, it's direct and you know whether that person's seen it or not seen it. So you kind of like, you, you get, to the point like a lot quicker so that's that's actually really good advice i know a lot of my classmates would really enjoy hearing that um yeah i sure. want to pick your brain about foot functioning paradigms because we're gonna so our cohort is going to be starting year two in september september october time yep. and um we're gonna do a lot of work on orthotics biomechanics so i wanted to kind of ask you more about foot functioning paradigms. I remember you saying that there was a bit of a debate in podiatry at the moment with um, like the, the root theory and then you've got like the STJ. So would you mind just explaining that briefly for me? 
Yeah, for sure. So foot functioning paradigms. Um, when you first asked me about that, I actually had to like, I had to actually Google what a foot functioning paradigm was. Um, <laughs> and then, um, and then, yeah, when I, when I found the art, found the article, I was like, Oh, that's what they're talking about. Right. <laughs> um, <laughs> Sorry. So yeah, I guess the, the, the paradigms, right. Are just like the overall overarching themes or concepts of how people think as podiatrists when it comes to, to biomechanics. Um, so there's different, obviously there's a long history of biomechanics. So that, so when things first started out, it was very structural. It was very, um, uh, like very much, you know, this has to be parallel to this and like the rear foot has to be vertical. The forefoot has to be, um, parallel to the, to the ground and that sort of stuff. And, yeah. and anything that deviates away from that is abnormal and needs, and needs to be corrected. Right. So, right. um, so that's like the old root theory, right? So, so um, Merton Root was the um, sort of researcher that came up with that, um, and that's yeah. formed that's formed the basis of podiatry for years, right? So, the yeah. years of biomechanics has been based around trying to get the foot functioning um, perfectly in alignment and and straight and perpendicular and um, neutral. So like in, an, in this ideal sort of shape and function of the foot, which we know is, which we know now is, is unrealistic and impossible. Right. So, um, so that just, yeah. it just doesn't work like that. Right. So um, yeah. it's good to, it's good to still have that, be understanding of that concept and, and um, use some of those principles when you're, um, when you're trying to do things with orthotics and that sort of thing. But um, yeah, it's, it definitely shouldn't be the core sort of, um, overarching theme that that governs your practice um so there's there's other paradigms as well so um another another one is the i think the sagittal plane facilitation yeah. um model yeah which is uh, which was by howard dannenberg um <laughs> in the us and he um came up with like he focused that all around the the first mtpj and the first ray um so function right. in the sagittal plane so um, so the importance of the dorsiflexion of the, oh, sorry, plantar flexion of the, the first metatarsal and then okay. the um, dorsiflexion of the, um, the big toe, essentially. Um, okay. So, and the importance of that sort of um, mechanism. And if there's any, um, any variation to that, then um, you get compensations and, and that sort of thing, which is true. It's a, it, it holds up well, that, that theory. Um, yeah. And then... Um, but the, the other one is the tissue stress model or the tissue stress theory, which mm -hmm. is, which is um, sort of the biggest one that I subscribe to um, with. And I, I think that's the, the easiest one because I think it's the easiest one to understand and the easiest one to <laughs> apply. <laughs> yeah. When I read them, yeah. I was like, I kind of like the tissue stress theory better because I could under actually understand what was going on. The other two, I was like, I, it was so lost on me. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And the, um, <laughs> the, yeah, the, the tissue stress model is where you identify like a, a structure of the foot. So whether it be the bone, the, the ligament, the tendon, right? You identify anatomical structure and then you um, determine whether it's under stress and how it's under stress. So what, what sort of stress it is. So whether it's a compressive stress, um, whether it's a tensile stress, um, whether it's a shear stress. So all the different ways that that tissue can be, um, can be stressed and then trying to, once you've identified that, then reduce that stress, right? So if the, if the, if the, if two bones are jam, jamming together in a compressive stress and that's mm -hmm. causing pain, pain in that joint, then, um, the tissue stress model is what you identify that and then you reduce that compression if you can, and that will help settle down the, the pain. It's pretty logical and makes sense. Um, so it's um, that's the one I subscribe to the most, um, but I think it's important to still understand the other ones and yeah. uh, and um, make up your own sort of way of practicing. But it is a, it is a topic of a lot of debate because um, you know older podiatrists who have been around for a long time will will, will still do the yeah the the old um, old codgers they um, <laughs> still still subscribe to the uh, the root theory and. Um, yeah. which is, which is okay. But, um, then when someone questions it or says something different then they don't, they don't like being questioned because they've based their whole career off it. Right. So of course you're going to get, course, yeah. um, some, of course you're going to get backlash and argument and debate. Um, but debate's good. <laughs> debate, 
debates what we need. So <laughs> yeah, I think uh, you need you need the good challenge because like if you have a challenge, you you can you know open up your brain a little bit more and and think like either the the the, the two things challenge will do to you i believe is either it will help you find a new way of thinking which is good for everybody or it will kind of confirm your own beliefs and it will make you more reassured so there's kind of like you're not really losing anything when you do have your beliefs and concepts you know challenged a little bit but um yeah no i agree i, I know what you mean about like meeting that resistance definitely i think i think it's really important to have it or not important but um but can possibly be beneficial to have a bit of a, um, an ego or a bias towards a certain yeah. um, way that you do things. It's, it's, it's normal and, and it's good, right? As long as it's, yeah. as long as it's, um, as long as it's con controlled. So you don't want to be uncontrollably biased towards one particular thing because that's, oh. that's just not how things work. Not one, one certain way of doing things doesn't work for every single patient that you see. Of course, um, yeah. So, uh, it's just like, it's just not feasible. So you've got to be yeah. aware of those limitations. Um, yeah. the, it's, the one, it's the ones that aren't aware of the limitations and just are like, no, that's how we've always done it. And, and um, I, get, yeah. I get results from my clients. Therefore, what you're saying is wrong. <laughs> um, but, <laughs> that's, um, they're, the, they're the sorts of people that you, <laughs> that you um, get into endless debates with online and they just ruin your yeah. ruin your week. Yeah. <laughs> Oh God, I just, I can picture so many of these like, you know, contractions happening already. It's terrible, yeah. but no. But they're the par yeah, they're the, pa they're the paradigms. There's, they're the three. I think there might be a fourth one that I have no idea about, but. Um, yeah, the, <laughs> the fourth one I was reading about was called the preferential pathway. Okay. And I kind like I kind of understand like I'm probably going to butcher this definition but I think it's just like a preferred way that your muscles kind of react oh, to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah okay so um I don't I don't know if this is the paradigm but my thoughts on that are that um your 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 body and your your nervous system right so so without the nervous system without the brain and the and the nerves we're just a, we're just slabs of meat yeah. essentially we're just <laughs> We're all just slabs of meat. If we didn't have a nervous system, we just we just flop onto the ground, right? So, um, and if we Probably. have a habit, if we have a habit of moving a particular way, um, or uh, can you? Oh, sorry, you just froze a bit. You can still hear me? Yeah. Oh, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, if we if we develop a habit for some reason, so for some reason, if we start using one side of our body more than the other, you might stand. At work, you might stand in one position longer mm. than the other with, without knowing, or you might play sports. So you might play netball or soccer on, on one side of the field as opposed to the other side. Um, so just without knowing, you develop a bias for using one side of your body. Um, and yeah. then the, that, that pattern is ingrained in your nervous system over time. Um, so, yeah. then, so then that side of your body becomes more conditioned to that nervous system and that and that what that way of moving um it just becomes a habit right um so then yeah. the other side of the body becomes deconditioned so it's not being used as much so move like use it or lose it right so um that that side of the body um becomes weak and then and then you either get um some sort of breakdown there on the weak side or the strong side something goes wrong as far as the um the tissues and so i think that preferred pathway maybe um, needs to be altered um, so, and that takes that takes you do that through strength training and rehab um, so that's in that's in the gym like doing learning movements and um, that sort of thing possibly you might be able to alter the way someone moves with with orthotics um, so I think that yeah. that that may be where that paradigm leads I haven't I don't know much about it but that's my thoughts on that yeah, anyway. I, I was I was like having a hard time like reading the um, the article that you had sent me because either and I like I just felt very stupid. I'm like I, this is English, right? <laughs> <laughs> but these concepts, like I mean, we're eventually gonna learn them. But it's really good to kind of like get in the habit of reading something to that level because that's gonna be realistically that's the kind of stuff we will be reading. And our dissertation is gonna be you know reading articles like like very similar to that. So it's it's actually really good training. So I really appreciate you sending that to me. <laughs> Um, no, that's right. So now is the final part of the interview where we play a game. <laughs> sounds sounds good. Okay, so Ready. this is 
So this is a rapid fire game. There's no time constraint, so please take your time to answer. Um, okay. But the only plot twist is I'm only accepting wrong answers. So you cannot answer with the correct answer. It has to be completely absurd. The stranger, the better. And I just kind of want to see how much trouble I can get you in. <laughs> this is the whole point of this interview, this, this one game. Okay. Good. You ready? Yep, let's do it. Okay. What's your favorite thing about feet? The smell. <laughs> What's your favorite thing about podiatry? Good one. I don't know. Um, socks. I don't know. I don't know. Okay. Uh, <laughs> That's great. Uh, what's your favorite thing about Australia? Um, just trying to think. Um, polar bears. Bob, brilliant. <laughs> what's your favorite movie? Favorite movie. Uh, uh, let's go. Let's go with. Um, uh, let's go with Shark Sharknado. Sharknado. Oh. <laughs> What's your favorite sport? Sport? Uh, badminton. What's your favorite snack? Uh, Vegemite. <laughs> Not really. What's your favorite drink? <laughs> favorite drink? Um, yeah. uh, favorite drink? Let's go with um, Bud Light. Brilliant. Favorite fruit? Yeah. Favorite fruit, uh, grapefruit. <laughs> What's your favorite animal? Favorite animal, uh, a dinosaur. Yes, <laughs> favorite yep. person. This is gonna get you in a lot of trouble. Favorite person. Um, I could I could deliberately get myself in trouble here, um, but I won't. <laughs> <You can. laughs> it's Dave, uh, isn't it? It's Dave, I know it's Dave. It is Dave. Yeah, Dave. Dave's awesome. Um, yeah. yeah. Uh, let's go. Let's go with Dave. He's really funny. Brilliant. <laughs> yep. And I wanted to ask you one final question because Dave asked me this question, and I feel like it was really necessary to pass it along. Just pass along the torture. How would you describe podiatry in a sentence? In a sentence, okay. Um, really challenging, but rewarding. How's that? How's that That's for a finish of the interview? That's I love awesome. it. You've done, you've done so great. I'm, I'm really, really pleased. I just want to say, again, thank you so much for joining me on this interview. I can't wait to publish this. <laughs> this is going to be great. Um, I hope awesome. you have a great night. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. Yeah. <laughs>